Hello family and thank you for coming back to our channel Deb Chanel's 40s world where we get into it even if we have to get into some family members asses as well okay but anyway it just is what it is and we sure got to get a hold of somebody her name is Sharon Young oh yes yeah, she tried to drop froggy at me and I don't told people and I told the family it's not about me it's not about me it's about subject matter one day I will put well hell I put myself on uh, the channel every day <laughs> And I know y'all get down and, and tell me some things and stuff like that. But y'all chastise me with respect. And that I have to approve. Get my stamp of approval. And I go on. I take my losses. And I come back with another commentary. Okay. Because that's what we do over here at the family house. That's what we do. You speak your mind. I speak my mind. But it's always geared on the subject matter. Not me per se. Okay. But I see Miss Sharon Young wants to to wake up the sleeping bear in me she done poked me and i remember her i didn't quite shout her out i don't believe if i did okay you were acting accordingly uh and then you deserve that shout out but like i said i don't think i did i think you were in my chat you know saying something but i let you have that one because i said okay she's not really used to this <laughs> platform yet i'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt but then you jumped again and it was out just out the side of your neck so we gonna have to correct you and like you said bid you adieu all right but before we do that i want to get into some family members that had came on my platform showed me love you know that's what we do over here you show me love i show you love it's tit for tat but it's always in love it's always in love millicent adams thank you for stopping by zolife coach thank you for stopping by baby and gillette alfred i think i seen gillette alfred in some past uh comments and she's always been respectful but i want to thank you for coming back and don't be a stranger come on back honey speak your mind that's what it's all about just as long as we do it respectfully now let's go get on into what we came here for which was season 12 episode 14 the title was called lions and tigers and shade and it was a good one a good um title that is so i can get on miss sharon young all right since she wants to throw up the um the hands we finna go on slay her and send her on her way okay because just like we picking them up we laying them down that's what we do over here at deb chanel's 48th word and her family comment all right my family will let me know okay my family will let me know if I don't got a little bit too out of pocket. And then they let me know when you need to sit down somewhere and hush your mouth. Okay, same as I do on um, on my family. But I, I think they're going to give me the gas on this one. Because, see, we like peace. We like serenity. And we like people's uh, perspectives. And I want y'all to go on down in that video that I dropped out last. Not this one. But the one where I was talking about Cynthia and... um. Nene doing something together. Uh, you know, it's just a little bit of commentary I did prior to tonight's episode. Go down there and refresh your minds. I have a very, very good man in there called Prince Ray. Hey, Prince boy. I'm like, uh -uh, uh -uh, might not know it now. Baby, I'm trying to, I'm a star. Whoa, whoa. Okay, Prince, I'm just playing off your name because I was a lover of Prince music and all of him all together. He was one man that looked like a man and a woman, but hell, he had a masculine side to him. Can I get an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But anyway, Prince Ray, thank you. Thank you for your long, interesting dedicated thought-provoking posts and y'all go on in there and see them like i said it was a video i did prior to this one look at some of his commentary that brother is enriched with knowledge okay don't know if he have a youtube channel hell he should be and it should be called the truth show and i'm talking about talking about all these celebrities going up here and doing this dark, strange things to change and all this that and the third okay but it just is what it is brilliant brother love your mind i will get back because i couldn't read it all because i needed to put this video out because i need to do another one with kenya moore being on the annie cohen show because she's showed her ass on this nice episode but i expected nothing less and nothing more from her okay that's what's her claim to fame that's what she feels gonna get her back in the million dollar club over there at uh bravo entertainment so we're gonna keep a watch eye watchful eye on her and see how she'll 
blaze, okay? But we're going to get on back to Sharon Young so we can go on and put her to rest, put her out of her misery so she don't have to come back over here. She definitely won't be coming back over here under that name sharon young but like i said people that i don't know I, I really don't recognize i don't get on the time of day i just erase it okay but she wanted to have her time and she did it professionally she did it respectfully so i can that is basically the reason i'm only addressing her okay because if it was somebody around when i didn't even recognize Bloop, they gone it doesn't really matter okay but like i said she's been in the comments before and i let it slide okay but now we cannot let it slide because now she's talking about me all right she's talking about me and my subscribers and my views okay now at the start of a video unless you have 20 10 000, 20 000, you're gonna come up but if you could check some of my stats baby i don't hit and 50 some k okay and i'm at my lower scale so don't uh get so much into my numbers pay attention to my commentary if you don't like it like it seems like you really do because you keep coming back i don't know who in the hell would come back to a show that they don't agree with or a, a youtube channel cr content creator give them the time to watch my videos from beginning to end and then want to hate on me <laughs> I just don't understand if you don't like me baby you don't like me it's okay it's good I, I i salute you in love but go go ahead you don't have to uh be over here penetrating your venom because hey in my family affair over here on my channel I, my whole room is split up into sections okay you have people like certain things in here and i get it i got it good okay but you don't belong anymore okay because you didn't know how to play your role your position you want to come for me any chance you got when it ain't about me it's about commentary okay the commentary that i'm giving you on subject matter i'm not coming for you but tonight yeah i am because see you came for me all right and we don't do that that's a disrespectful thing you start out respectful then you got disrespectful see the two don't belong okay we don't have good and bad over here we have a difference of opinion we let you express yourself and that's how we roll but we don't go at each other that's not a family thing see you remind me of one of them family members that never cared for another family member you see somebody rise and trying to do the thing they ain't quite got it there but they on the pathway to getting something that they want and you always that family member that going around saying crazy shit to other family members trying to provoke a conversation which means it's going to turn into an argument because you like strife you like chaos you like this that and third i suggest you go get your youtube channel you pick up your commentary and you come on your platform and um uh, spit out whatever kind of content that you want to spit out okay and see for people to try to come for you and stop staying on instead of them staying on topic matter then you can understand what i'm talking about when i am trying to give you a bit of advice you couldn't sit there you couldn't stay still you couldn't stay on subject matter so i must yes bid you adieu now you did make something uh you said something about invalid information this that and the third hell i told you from the beginning all i do is speculate all i do is give my opinion on subject matter i did not tell you from day one that this is the gospel truth this is the truth take it for what it is and run with it no i didn't tell you that so evidently you need to go all the way back from the start or the inception of my channel and catch back up because somewhere down the road you went bonkers okay you flew in another whole direction you want your shine but see you can't get your shine on here unless you're doing something positive you're saying something positive and you're just loving on me you can't come up here and be disrespectful disruptive and think this is a beefing channel there are several people i can point you into the direction if that's what you want to do is beef uh-uh i'm not in that frame of mind i'm with them hands if i really lose my mind or i'm going in for fetal position then i'm coming for your bank account that's how i roll okay baby but evidently you don't understand all of that you think i'm stupid i'm crazy i'm not an entertainer i'm not a comedian what the hell are you doing over here on my channel if you don't like what i'm dishing out 
kind of seem like you brainless to me because ain't nowhere in the world I'm going to be somewhere I don't enjoy. It ain't going to happen whether it's free or I'm paying for it. Got it? Good. Okay, now you said something about Candy and her tag store. Let me tell you something about Candy. Let's go way back. Let's go way on back. Okay, to when she had this incident that Phaedra tried to represent this young brother because she was trying to shade him on a restaurant idea which eventually came uh, to fruition the OLG uh, restaurant okay he said he had the same talk with Candy way on back before she got married to Todd told him about his exception his ideas of starting this kind of southern cuisine type of thing well we see how that all fucked up okay she tried to go and say no he's a jealous employee I didn't work him like this because see he was her assistant or some sort of event planner for her and she didn't want to get no payment to him presto ASAP after he finished his job okay she was trying to not pay she was trying to be doing that slave type of labor labor laboring so you see that was brought on on tv and that was one case um Thasia really didn't set up to win but she took him to a, a lawyer that would be the winning team for him but she spearheaded him in that direction so if you say I, i'm like Thasia this that and the third well they don't put me in Thasia ring okay because she's still being out there prosperous she got several professional degrees behind her and she's still being seen as one person that we really want to come back to um the real housewives of atlanta hell they've been chanting for her to come back so you tell me she ain't got no smoke honey she got fire watch her okay but we might have to get rid of candy because candy ain't bringing us nothing all right but like i said it just is what it is that infraction um uh, a phaedra did do it was quite uh an epic fail and we have to slap her on the hand but i think hey when do you stop getting uh doomed and, and persecuted for that one thing okay because can made money off that idea if i'm not mistaken so yes if you want to put me over there with phaedra pause put me baby put me okay at least i know where phaedra coming from and i know how to maneuver and navigate around her tricks of the trade all right and you said something about Tad's clothing line. Family, help me out. I'm not going to go into a lot of things uh, trying to distinguish whether I said something uh, or not. But I'm pretty sure I'm on right point when it comes to tag store. The tags, she got that from, she was, she tried to make it hers. But from my understanding of it all, it was a, a business ship that she started with a friend. Of course, as she got on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, she claimed it as her own. And I guess silenced her partner to just say, hey, it was just my idea. But you, you still getting your revenue, whatever. I can see Candy doing that all day, all all night long okay because that's what she do she come from behind see what you doing and try to mix it up and get it out there before you did tax was not from my understanding in fruition until she got on real housewives of atlanta okay and then she started putting her dollars because she's a smart businesswoman. she knows where it means to set up some different things to have uh, extra stream of revenue I think that's when she puts a lot of her money to bring that one tag store up because she didn't have many she just had that one and then she had to make that as her storyline as well so no 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 don't get it twisted okay Bravo Entertainment helped put uh, dreams and, and things out there for these Real Housewives of Atlanta ladies. Don't get it twisted, baby. Candy didn't have too much of nothing. Probably no more than what you had or you got going on. Same for me until she hit the Real Housewives of Atlanta and she started to save and place her money in, in different projects to say, yes, she has this, yes, she has that. Because at one time, Candy was making us believe that she was stock owner and caretaker of the buildings that she do own but then we found out later on she was leasing shit okay girl stop it i can't take you anymore so yes like you said you know you will be blocked <laughs> mm, okay yes you will uh probably before i put out this video but it is what it is yes yeah. so don't come back you can't get back in uh it just is what it is you, you flew through the cracks she was under the radar you said what you had to say i addressed you accordingly and i don't think i was being malicious nor uh disrespectful to you okay so again i bid you adieu and with that i'm saying good night to you now let's get on from her all right 
<laughs> let's get on from her. Let's get on into this commentary, which was a snooze fest. It was a pure bore. Woo child. But I was there from beginning to end. I can't do nothing but hit myself outside my head and say, why? Why must I treat myself so bad? And look at this uh, foolery fuckery piece of shit they gave us tonight okay but it just is what it is i lost my hour but i'm gonna do some commentary on it because i did enjoy just a smidgen just a smidgen of what they were trying to give us tonight okay like i said the title was uh season 12 episode 14 it was called lions and tigers and shade okay first part of it i want to say nene lost some weight there she i don't know if she actually did some exercise or she was just eating her many small meals like she say and drinking these shakes and uh different things to that effect i really don't know but i'm gonna give it up to her girl was looking good she was really looking nice, and I was so proud of her, so proud of her. But we're going to get on into it. We had a part where Marlo uh, comes into Swag Boutique and calls herself visiting Nene, and Nene shows uh, a little gift that Cynthia had sent back uh, to her from whatever Nene had called herself giving Cynthia at, at her new Baylor wine celery event she was having and she goes on in and she nice nasty shade the gift time it was kind of wrinkled here and there but that's Nene's style you either love her or you like her okay I mean you either love her or you hate her just it just depends on how you feel in that particular day or how you play, uh, feel in that particular season but Nene hasn't brought uh, broke character with that she always tries to give us a little shade among truth or her truth i should say then we got a situation where you know um they leave and i'm like man what Marlo took an uber up there or something because <laughs> i'm confused when they were rolling down the street go out calling themselves going to have lunch together wherever they were going uh nene was driving okay so i'm like well damn Marlo, you came up there in a taxi cab or uber girl what's going on where's your vehicle okay but moving on from that situation uh we got Cynthia. she comes in to see kenya um she's having a little light lunch over there at kenya's place and um she goes on calling herself on an apology tour that's what she feels nene was uh doing and you know she was okay with it and um of course kenya was trying to make shade here and there and then cynthia goes on and pray over her food but then she does a little blasphemy where she got to throw <clears throat> Kenya under the bus as she said Kenya threw her under the bus when it came to um that little whole situation that Cynthia invited the cookie lady and stuff and then again that's why I said see I don't know why y'all you know be sitting there uh kicking it with Kenya when y'all know she gonna stab y'all in the back she don't like it Kenya be watching everybody's moves and and conversations and if it ain't sitting there uh where y'all are uh gearing to upping her one up then she gonna come back for y'all but you and candy meaning cynthia and candy y'all so dumb why would y'all want her to come back at y'all just meet her head on shut her down and just let status quo be status quo because she getting on cynthia saying well i never would have shaded you or threw you under the bus but you went behind my back and talked to tanya and tried to straighten things out then you're gonna come and talk to me she said i just felt that was just uh, something you shouldn't have done you should have checked with me before you did that or at least told me what you were doing i said well, ain't that the pot calling the kettle black nene was asking the same thing from cynthia which you possibly coming to the seagram's wine event that cynthia was throwing or not but cynthia you felt cynthia didn't have a need or should have should not have had to up one nene up with that information that you possibly may be coming so i'm like damn cynthia kind of good both of y'all now she. but like i said what's good for the goose is good for the gander you want a nene to take the hit so can you why you couldn't take the hit but now you hit below the belt you went on down to them feet and broke cynthia off one so cynthia candy y'all want a person that do that to y'all okay that's gonna stay lock loaded on her friends when she's calling y'all her friends but she's acting like an enemy i don't understand it's kind of crazy to me but anyway move from that situation um we got um 
oh, she goes and explains herself because it was a little editing when Kenya was trying to say uh, some clips they were trying to play prior to getting to this episode that um, a cheater, once a cheater, always a cheater. But then they showed us the other side to that when she was talking to Cynthia about Mike and other things of what he said. Uh, that in general, you know, if a person is changing or they can change if they want to, then they don't. They don't necessarily have to be seen as a cheater anymore. That's pretty much in their past. And just as long as you all are both going to counseling to try to fix the issue on why this person is cheating or has cheated and, and find no uh, real harm that they did within the situation, then it can be worked out. And like I said, you know, she made some truth into that. So I ain't going to, you know, shade Kenny on that one. That was a well thought out um bit of information or suggestion or advice she gave to Cynthia it was very solid but when it comes to Mike you got to look at the person okay the person he was the person he is currently and the person you think he may transform to be but again this brother's out here talking still out the side of his neck and not being b believable because if it was believable Cynthia you wouldn't be making it as a storyline because I think some of that some of that storyline you giving us or your of your apprehension on going forward with Mike, I think it's real. I think it's genuine. But you need to be, you know, showing up and showing out. But then again, that's not your character. Hell, I wish you would have just stayed with Peter and sit up here and form a relationship with a new man that seems like he gonna drive your ass in the ground as well. Okay, and do something with your self esteem. Moving off on that situation, we got Riley and uh, Candy in their tag store. I'm saying they because I'm sure it's gonna be if Candy play her cards right, it'll be a legacy left for her but i don't think um um riley's too interested in her mother's fashion she's too much parlaying in the name brand stuff okay and she see candy's stuff as uh, second and third dairy okay but it is what it is but i don't understand how these children be shading their parents like it ain't nobody's business you hear me they be shooting straight from the hip with no chaser because candy was saying the skirt that riley was trying to maybe purchase or whatever uh was a bit skimpy but she riley is gonna read her mama time i know you ain't talking about uh skimpiness and i guess she was alluding to her mother's bedroom candy and how she expresses herself in her other business adventures as well as the apparel that candy seems to uh strut herself around in um giving a, <laughs> an example she was getting on her mom about what she was wearing while she was trying to size her up on what she wants to wear like she said you can damn now sit through that shirt you got on now mama that blouse and i was like damn right get riley get her ass get her ass okay the candy i don't know it seemed like you the child you and noel are the true uh the parents of cynthia and candy because they acting like they reverting back to childhood i don't understand that whole scenario but anyway family like i said anybody got time they on their downtime tell me uh what they can have this store in 2008 prior to i mean 2009 prior to her getting to the show or was it something she assimilated got herself involved in during the show okay but anyway moving from that issue we got portia playing with baby girl pj she's just a uh, um that's poor just sweet to me okay you know she get into the, some some strange ass conversations and she makes some strange ass comments <coughs> that's not valid or warrant but i just like Portia. i do i do because she's standing her own shit she be ready to be about them hands she be uh, well, we don't really want her to be about them hands but we know she ain't no punk okay she's far from being a punk she'll get she people straight in a hot flashing minute okay so I, I i like that she's standing her own shit she's a good mother she's been betrayed as a good mother but it's that other side of her that worries me but she ain't my child we just keep her in prayer and maybe she can give a, a get herself a little bit more self uh esteem when it comes to picking better men okay but anyway moving from there we got greg greg is playing a little role which greg now you don't got old cancer scale don't come out being like a itch like peter peter trying to insert yourself in women's business okay don't do that uh greg we like you you're old g you, let me come on now we already got this issue saying you done impregnated somebody out there but i'm still trying to wrap around my mind you too old to be having babies like him peter you're too old but you know that's another story that's another video 
But yeah, Greg was playing around trying to act like Cynthia. And he pretty much said Cynthia likes to get up Nene's ass. You know, she he likes to uh she she can't she can't move without Nene. She she, she Nene is just a fixture. And I have come to accept it and believe it too. All right, as harsh as it sounds, but Cynthia gives us nothing but proof every day when she comes on this show and tries to uh, make nice with Nene, but then behind closed doors or out of Nene's uh, face, she talking about her. Okay, so Greg does his rendition or his little acting of how Cynthia would act, and then he goes and say, then she had to go get Mike, and Mike had to give her some little legs to stand on. <laughs> Come out the new new child. I thought that was a cute scene, but I'm like, Greg, come on now. You need to fall back. You need to fall on back and be the old gentleman that we love and we respect. You know, you for some. Don't let Nene pull you in her madness. Don't let Nene pull you in no woman's madness. Okay. You won't win, Greg. They'll sew you up and put you out the pasture, honey. But anyway. Love my grid, love my grid. Then we get to a situation where we're there at uh, Cynthia's Wine Bailey uh, Wine Cellar uh, shop where she's selling wines or whatnot, whatever. And her and Nene get together, they discuss things. One thing come up where Nene is trying to express to her, use out in social media world, calling me a toxic friend, this, that, and the third. Nene was playing on the word toxic. And Cynthia was basically saying, you know, you're a mix between good and bad. If somebody is talking about you or they have a problem with you, you want to shut down. You want to, you know, uh, what do you call them, uh, banish them from your presence. You don't want to talk to them no more. And she's just saying, you know, you're a bad friend when it comes to that, Nene. It, it, just like you dish it out, you should be able to take it. And I'm like, well, damn, Cynthia, when did you ever get back with Nene when she had, you know, threw you under the bus or whatever? And then you don't do it to Nene's face. You go do it to other people. And the other people had to come ask Nene about this shit. Just go on and stand in your shit. If Nene is acting like a spade, call her a spade. If she call you out her name, call her out her name. And then tell her why you didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to. Marlo do it every day with Nene. Every day. Nene say some foul shit. Then Marlo, Marlo shit shit down. Okay? Just like they had that incident in Toronto, Canada. Tell me, Marlo, this is your room. You needed it up. Marlo got back in her ass. Okay? She said, hell, this shit ain't my fault. <laughs> and Nene looked at her like, don't go there. And Nene shut her mouth. Okay? Because she know. Uh, she got shit on Nene. She don't saw too much of Nene's shit, and Nene knows she don't want to go there. Okay, so I caught I caught that little T. I caught that little facial expression. So yes, Nene back down. Not Milo is not the one you want to mess with. Okay, then we got Cynthia. Cynthia's uh saying, well, what about you calling me weak and insecure? What about that, Nene? What do you think that didn't hurt my feelings? This and that. I thought, okay, okay, both of y'all were right. Yes, toxic friend is a bit much, but I understood where you were coming from. Uh, Cynthia, you are kind of weak and insecure. You are a, a hang-on type person, all right? So, I can see what Nene. So, y'all both had points. But then, Nene expresses that, Cynthia, you went on seven times, seven different interviews and talked about me like a dog. You know, and, um, and, and that wasn't right. Why Why are you just going to come to me? And then she said, well, hell, you would probably block. Uh, both of them probably blocked each other. Their phones is what I'm talking about. It just is what it is. Okay. And then Cynthia told Nene uh, to live her life. I was like, okay. So, you know, they're going back and forth bantering. And it didn't seem like Nene was getting through to her. She wouldn't get through to Nene. So, of course, in Nene's fashion, she walked out. Okay. And I'm like, Cynthia, this was a time for you to have stand, stood in your ground. Not even even thought about going outside that door. Nene had to stay her ass out there if that's what she would because personally and frankly I thought she was gone, okay? And it was gonna be to be repeated or to be uh what do you call it? To be continued, okay, type of situation. But no, nah, hun, I would have stayed up in there, I got me a bottle of wine and just ate me some cheese and crackers and, and tried to meet up with the ooh, excuse me. The rest of the ladies, or I would have, hell, I don't know what I would have did, but I know I wouldn't have been out there uh, chasing out the nene, okay? Not if, from this found new respect you found for yourself and that your fiancé is trying to give you an added voice of security to stand in your own shit. But, okay, it just is what it is. We go to commercial, we come back. We got Cynthia goes out to talk to nene. <laughs> 
so see Nina didn't go nowhere child she was sitting out there feeling a breeze here and there going to uh greet her toxic friend as she calls her all right and of course Nene is calling herself crying and carrying on but I ain't see one tear drop and I'm like damn Nene you was was an actress as you call yourself uh and yet we never saw one tear come out your eyes. Okay, we saw your eyes was kind of red, but I'm thinking it's because of the makeup. Or you had some allergies going on, but it was no tears coming out. I'm like, girl, girl, you're doing too much and you're not acting appropriately. And your acting skills are F. Okay, a grade point average of F, zero. You're not even on the scale. You need to go back, do some well, and you kind of like pass that season. We just have to take you as we can give you it. I don't know, Nene. Just, just stay on the show if you can. Only if you can, Nene. Because it seems it don't look too good for you on the show either as we going fast forward. Uh, but it just is what it is. They talk some shit amongst themselves about not trying to be uh, as mean in the public eye. And they trying to fix their friendship and this, that, and that. They get something going. And then Cynthia tries to hug it out. And Nene tries to back off from it. And Cynthia tries to embrace her a little harder. And... You know, they apologize to each other. But, like, Nina, you a bad actress. Just a bad actress. And then Cynthia, you know, you pretty much full of shit. Because once Nene say something, uh, again, that you don't like, you're going to be out there trying to, you know, dog her out. It was a, uh, just a foolish fuck. Oh, it was a fuck, fuckery type of fraudulent scene that we had going on. And I wasn't I wasn't here for it. I was just not here for it. Okay. But y'all go and continue to argue with yourselves, and, and we'll see y'all next slideshow, okay? But anyway, we got Marlo and Portia. They start conversing over the phone about going to Nene's event. You know, Marlo's getting uh, dressed. She got her makeup person there, uh, getting her all beautified. And Portia's like, I ain't going. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I want Nene to be real with me. Nene been fake. Uh... Uh, prior to my baby being born, after my baby, and I, I just don't feel it. Yeah, I got that old, um, talking about dressing animal prints and talking about, you know, people lying on her. <laughs> she playing out the word of the lion. And I was just like, yeah, are we in, um, what is it called? The Lion King type of situation? I don't understand. But in a way, it makes sense now uh, when we were seeing the ladies. Uh, congregating wearing leopard prints and stuff. Now we see what it was really about. They were going to Nene's event uh, when they were taping and they were just showing us little parts of stuff uh, that they were making up for us to be gearing up for the new season for 12. Okay. But anyway, uh, Marlo ain't trying to really beg her to come. She said, you know, you should come. But, uh, you know, if you don't want to come, I'll give your condolences. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. So then we go to um, Cynthia Picks Up Eva for the event uh, that Nene is hosting. And um, definitely, what's her name? Damn, Eva. You know, she jumps in the Jeep and stuff. And I always eating too. Not the most eating is woman. Okay, beautiful. You know. Came out, lost all the weight. She's flawless. But I'm like, that's an eating ass woman, okay? But anyway, uh, they're trying to call themselves riding to the event. And they finally get there. And um, the producers didn't want them to get out the car yet. I guess they needed to set up or whatever. But he was like, nah, I got to use the bathroom. But it came up from using the bathroom to her going into contractions. And I'm like, wait a minute now. And, you know, um, they go on and try to take her to the bathroom. But they made it down to a seating area where she was just sitting down. And really, the scene just didn't make too much of a, a, a hill of beans to me. Because, um, you know, they would ask her, you know, what she want to do. And she was like, oh, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. And, you know, uh, Cynthia finally comes in to address her and sees her in distress. She's like, no, nah, I don't think you're going to be fine. I think you're going to have a baby and this, that, and the third. And, you know, they go on and have small talk. And then you got Candy coming in and this, that, and the third. And they finally get to a booth where they're sitting down with Eva. And Eva's rubbing and blowing and all this kind of stuff. Because Eva had already speculated that she felt she was going 
or, or, or going through having some type of contractions. Uh, it probably was Braxton Hicks, but we don't really know. And like I said, she should know what's going on because she don't have uh, two kids prior to uh, the one that's coming in to the world um, in a couple of more days or whatnot. So uh, they called out the jacket. Which I don't know why they did that. It should have been calling 911. But anyway, she said, okay, I can give y'all instructions on how to deliver a baby if Eva don't want to come in. And then Candace like, no, we ain't finna do all that, you know. So, pretty much Cynthia uh, tells everybody. And we heard from the audio when Cynthia was going. They went on to Northside Hospital. Or was it Piedmont? Hell, I, I'm kind of confused. It seemed like it said Northside, but it might have been Piedmont. Because if they were downtown and she got there that quick. It had to be Piedmont because she couldn't have got the Northside Hospital that fast. But anyway, either or, two wonderful hospitals. I had my baby at Northside in 91, and I worked for Piedmont Hospital. So, yes, two two good ones, two good ones. Okay, moving on from that scene, we uh, got Tan. She speaks with Candy about uh, the previous event and the taping and all of that. And they show us a little clip where she also is talking to Candy and Portia uh prior to i guess uh after the event will kenya call herself getting tanya together and just spewing all types of belligerent type of um um comments at her as well as bringing the cookie lady to fruition to throw as the piece of resi resistance in uh, Tanya's face thinking she's going to do something to break up their relationship with her uh, fiance Paul but um, yeah Candy and um, what's her name uh, Tanya's upstairs talking and Kenya finally comes in uh, of course Nene is 2.5 hours two and a half hours late for her own event uh, Kenya shows up at the event Stay five minutes okay well, It looked like it was five to me Hell it could have been two She was like oh she ain't here Well I'm finna go but she was quite rude She only act like she saw uh, Candy was the only one in the room And you know again Candy was like What you know <laughs> Just totally shading Tanya. That's why I said Tanya's a good one. She's a very good one. But like I said, she's so polished and professional. She ain't got time to sit there and, and, and get into somebody's antics. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate Tanya for that. But Tanya, if you're gonna plan on being on this show, you gotta you gotta show some shit now. You got maybe you keep hanging around Portia. You can get some people together, okay? Cause you can't sit there and, and take it all in and thinking, you know. Uh, let people run out of you, okay? That's what the whole thing is, drama field. We need to see you react. Even though I know you got things you do outside of the show, but if you want to continue to be a member on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, we need your silence to not be so silent at times. Silence is golden, but sometimes you got to get a sister together when you got to get a sister together so she can get off you, okay? So she can get off your back, okay? You need a face-to-face. -face. You don't need her riding your back, okay? Showing she can punk you at any time. You need to... to uh. Shut Kenya more down, shut her down good, because you see, she don't come from Marlo. She barely can come from Nene, but she damn sure don't fuck with Marlo, okay? Don't know what Marlo may have on her, or maybe she just really don't want that smoke. And she ain't trying to uh, fool with Porsche on, in that instance as well, because Porsche, we all know, we saw it on TV, okay? Need we say more? No, we don't. Okay, but uh, yeah. Kenya call herself, you know, shading, acting like she don't even see Tanya. She thinks Tanya's a ghost. All the persons in the room, it's just her and Candy or whatnot. It just is what it is. She should have just phoned in. She didn't have to come in to uh, make that entrance, okay? So, anyway, Kenya leaves. And there, then again, we just have Tanya and um, uh, Candy there, which, you know, is crazy as fuck. You know, I, I wouldn't have been there with Candy. I would have left too and then came back. You know what I'm saying? Because I just don't be with people that talk about me behind my back and then want to smile in front of my face unless I've gotten them together. And then it's just status quo. You move, I'm going to move, okay? It, 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 we're going to be playing Uno's up there. For you know it, I'm going to be playing Dominoes. All right, I'm going to be switching the game every five minutes so you can be in confusion, okay? And you don't know when I'm going to strike next. But anyway, move from that situation. Um, let me see. We got Nene finally show up, like I said, after 
uh, the two women wait patiently for her for two and a half hours. I don't understand because I wouldn't have waited that long, okay? But if they was on Bravo Dime, they did what they had to do. Nene finally comes up, straighten her stuff, honey, and not in her motif. She said it was a, a, a printed affair, a leopard affair, or some kind of animal print affair. Honey, please. She came up there with a pocketbook, but she was all in black. <laughs> Like, girl, I can't take it. And then she shows up uh, trying to explain herself, but not really explaining herself. And 10 minutes after that, her whole entourage show up. And me and my daughter were sitting there looking at like, well, who in the hell are all these people trying to get their one minute to 10 minutes to 15 minutes of fame? Okay, the brother still ain't going to look at them. <laughs> they still ain't going to look at them, Okay. But yes, Nene showed up with her ladies of success group. Okay, and you got Candy looking at like, who are these people? Who are all these people and why are they here? Okay, and I'm like, no, nah, Candy, that's a side that she don't show you. She hang with other people outside the group because she needs to be fully Nene Leaks in full form. So she's going to be pitting her group of women against the women that she calls don't like her on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, which was attack and move, Nene, when you saying you trying to make up with these women you throw on all the branches you don't just overshadow them with your new group of people okay but you know can we like who these people why are they here just you know being all nasty and stuff and they're gonna talk all crazy now she ain't got nobody there because <laughs> she definitely outnumbered because cynthia ain't there kenya ain't there so yeah she's the third wheel so she looking for backup but hey tanya ain't on your side tanya cool with everybody but you've been shaded with her so why would she team up with you so no she teamed nene and team marlo all day every day then um they go and try to express themselves you know putting them on camera the uh bravo crew producers trying to get everybody in you know filming position and i'm like those women show did not look like they belong okay and i'm like nene if you're gonna do something like this have it where it's just you and you invite the girls to come in and then they mix and mingle if you dare let them mix and mingle with your newfound friends okay so i'm like nene you fake fraudulent and full of shit okay and the foolery you got going on is beyond you. So I'm like, uh, I couldn't even take it myself. But anyway, Portia comes up. She steals Nene's thunder. Because <laughs> Nene don't talk about her too, right? Okay, and it's all going to show on camera. That's going to make Nene look like a fool again. Like it wasn't true. It was not authentic. But I like how baby girl Portia came in. She strolled on in there with Shamil. Shamil's always so quiet. I'm like, why do we have her here, Lord? But if she needs to accompany Portia to give Portia that effort, extra oomph to go and do getting her big girl draws and come on and solidify herself and make her presence known so she can get paid hey miss diane thank you for giving your girl the time of day to say get your ass out of here and go and make nice okay and still get them bravo chicks so the portia came in she greeted everybody like she knew them but she was sitting there like where, where are these women coming from <laughs> <laughs> they are past their age and their bedtime. Why are they out? Okay, why are they? I can't handle all these old women. That's what Portia was giving me. All right, Portia, you will be old or seasoned one day too. So shut up, make your rounds, and play nice, which she did in her fashion. Went over there and talked to Nene. Was very much uh, warm with Nene and trying to see where they can go after this little stunt that Nene pulled. But I was there for the shade that Portia was throwing in her her confessionals like where do these people come from hopper where are they coming from they look very well seasoned like they need to be at a yacht club somewhere because some of them look like they could barely move and tell you the truth uh and and, and shame the devil hell i could be <laughs> up there with them because i didn't want to move either i just wanted to look get my speculation and move on but i'm telling you, half of them look the old and how i act sometimes I'm like damn nene where you get these 70 80 year old women from girl but anyway if you could get somebody to be your yes dolls i guess that's what you need so all i'm saying like they were very in tow with what nene was giving them they were cool and maybe nene promised them some a uh, fanfare where they can get seen and being promoting their businesses and stuff through bravo entertainment when she's around i have no idea i don't know what nene was coming with that but I'm like, Nene, come on back home to your real housewives of Atlanta family so we can see a, a, a little 
plethora of old well let me say season versus young folks and y'all intermingling and y'all trying to tell these young folks how to get to the status of being an OG okay and being very well comfortable in the season age where you don't have to go out here and do all these things get your money and then have your fun and your season type age when you get in your like 55 plus so you don't have to be working hard okay but that's all I had for this interview this review this recap of of a bunch of mess it was a snooze fest but i had to give it to y'all and uh in my fashion of where i get down and um well sir i got anything else to say no i don't okay but y'all be blessed y'all have another fabulous week worth of work out there i'm gonna try to get this video out with kenya moore i don't know i might not ch uh check it out i don't know i might go on candy bird's page and see what she's doing on speak on it you know just to see how she want to uh broadcast herself of seeing how she conducted herself through this uh previous episode because i'm saying i'm telling you she was like out of water she was like a fish out of water she ain't had her two besties there to say anything and at the end she gonna say this is the fakest uh bunch of friendships <laughs> i said i'm like why can do why because she didn't uh have real housewives of Atlanta friends to be fake and fraudulent with she's been fake and fraudulent with some other women that you don't know about and you can't shade because they'll probably cut your ass out on the spot okay and they might have more money than you can you just don't know people that's sitting in silence don't mean they ain't making money or they ain't got money that's what you call well-established money they ain't got to toot their own horn if you in the business lane lane or where they are you might you might have to do your education you might have to do your follow-up and see about some of these ladies that's nini's hanging out with they might have more money than nini <laughs> Okay, they just want to use her platform to go even higher. But see, Nene, I don't know. Nene is out, out there everywhere, okay? And the same group she called herself don't form. I wonder if they're going to be with her when she's not on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And her funds are starting to dwindle up. Are they still going to be there for you, Nene? What about your friends? Will they let you down? Will they stand their ground? Okay, I don't know that song, but it sounded good to me. And the lyrics are probably off. But y'all know I'm talking about what about your friends nene what about your new found fair weather friends that you got hanging with you girl girl they're gonna be there when the times get tough i don't know girl i don't know but anyway y'all that's all i have for this particular video get down in them uh comment section remember it's not about me it's about subject matter and let's just have fun interacting with one another dropping down our speculations our opinions of what we felt and we'll move on to the next video but y'all be blessed and i'll talk to you next time okay and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well as share and like my videos good night